We've introduced now uh, a number of models uh, of Slack. Uh, we saw a basic model, then we saw an extension with only one market static. We saw an extension uh, with two markets, you know, a labor market and a product market. We also saw a dynamic extension. Uh, and then for all these models, we saw, uh, so we did a bunch of comparative statics. We, we saw how the models responded to various shocks, you know, aggregate demand shock, aggregate supply shocks. Um, so we understood all of this. Now it's time to move on uh, and start looking at the efficiency properties of this model. Uh, and uh, of course, once we've done that, then we'll be, that would be like a, a key um, step towards then uh, thinking about uh, policies uh, and especially um, stabilization uh, policies. That is um, policies that the government put in place to try to make sure that the level of activity in the economy is appropriate. Um, so we'll, you know, we, and we'll see that you can do that through monetary policy, you can do that through fiscal policy. Um, but before we move to the policy part of the course, we need to um, study the efficiency properties of our models. Um, and, and in particular, you know, we need to define and characterize the efficient amount of slack in these models because this will be a key targets for policies and key input into the policy, uh, into the process of uh, designing policies. Um, so to start with, just um, at the high level, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what is social welfare and uh, what is efficiency. Uh, so let's start with social welfare. Uh, so these are things that you must have seen before, but I'm just uh, doing a quick uh, quick recap uh, in case a quick refresher in case that's helpful, uh, and then you know and, and then we'll uh, we'll delve into the model. So what is social welfare? When we talk about um, social welfare in a macro model, well, that's very very easy. You know, in macro models, you always introduce a utility function for all the people who are in your model that you feature in your model. And social welfare is just the sum of all the utilities of all the people that feature in the model. Some of the utility uh, of all the, uh, you know, what we call the agents, but just the, the people that feature in the model. Right? Uh, so that's social welfare. And that's, you know, it's a measure of basically the aggregate um, welfare of all the participants in the model. And in general, you know, we'll always assume that the goal, uh, the goal of any policy, you know, is to maximize social welfare, you know, subject to, of course, the constraint that the policy faces. But in general, the goal of policy and the government It's to do whatever they can to maximize um, social welfare. All right. So then, um, when we so this is social welfare. Now, when we talk about efficiency, what uh, what does it mean? Or if you want, like, um, what's efficiency and what's an efficient allocation? So um, an allocation usually is just, uh, you know, a, a description of the value of all the uh, kind of 
objects that are in your model. So for instance, uh, in the model that we've studied, your allocation would be giving you like the number of people who are uh, producers, number of people who are recruiters. Uh, it would give you like the number of people who are unemployed. It would give you like consumption. It would give you output. So basically for all the uh, goods and services that are in the economy, it's just telling you like how many of each of these things you have. Uh, So an allocation is just a description of all, you know, in economic model, usually we just have a bunch of, bunch of goods, uh, you know, and we have uh, just a bunch of people who do various things, uh, you know, good services. And an allocation is just a description of what all these, you know, how many of all, these, you know, what all these people are doing and how many of all these goods we have. Uh, Description of all uh, goods in model plus description of uh, what people are doing in model. Okay, so an allocation is just like a description of what's going on in your model at, at any point in time. So I guess description of all the good, I guess what I should say is description of the number, uh, description of the number of goods in the model and, you know, for each number of, uh, each number of uh, goods that's available and description of what people are doing. And then an efficient allocation then is just an allocation that maximizes social welfare. But of course, so you could, you know, if we take like our models of Slack, you could say, all right, so while you know, we could say that all the workers that we have available, we have to say what they are doing. So let's say they are all producers, and then let's say they produce infinitely many services, uh, given that people value services, that would be what uh, maximize social welfare. But of course, that's not interesting because this is not taking into account the constraints that are inherent to, uh, to the model. Uh, that we have, and uh, so therefore the constraints that are inherent to the um, economic environment. So it's an allocation that maximizes social welfare, of course, but subject to um, the structure of the model. Uh, so here what I mean is that it has to be subject to the production function that we've assumed, it has to be subject to the matching function that we've assumed. So it's basically you know, subject to uh, the structure that we've assumed to the, in the model. So basically, people are only able to use the tools that we've assumed uh, in the model. Uh, in the sense, we can say, you know, subject to the tools available in the model. At some level, you, so basically an allocation tells you like what everybody, uh, what everybody is doing and whatever it is that they produce. And you want to do that to maximize welfare. But of course, we limit ourselves to the tools that we've assumed are present in this economy and therefore that we've assumed in the model. So why do we care about efficiency? Why do we care about knowing what is the efficient allocation? Why do we care about efficiency or the efficient allocation? Well, that's because um, we said, so the efficient allocation is the allocation that's going to uh, maximize welfare. But at the same time, we also said that the goal of government and policy in general um, you know, is to maximize uh, is to maximize welfare. You know, at least in uh, 
democratic um, societies. Um, at least, you know, the stated goal of the government is to maximize welfare. Um, so the reason that we care about efficiency and the efficient allocation and the properties of the model around that is because um, it's going to tell us whether uh, there is a role for the government or not. And if indeed we suspect that the economy doesn't operate efficiently and therefore there is a role for the government, it's going to tell us, um, it's going to give us hints as to what policy should do to try to bring the economy closer to efficiency. Uh, So basically, we care about efficiency uh, and the efficient allocation because it tells us whether there is a role for uh, government intervention. And policy. Uh, so for instance, if you take uh, an RBC model that we talked about initially uh, at the beginning of the course, these models, you know, they are a Valrhesian model, therefore they are always efficient. You know, in, in the, base, the baseline model is always efficient. So you study the model, you see that you're always at efficiency, and so what, you know, the, the government wants to maximize welfare, but the model in itself, you know, in the model, the model tells you that the economy actually without government intervention, just through markets, because markets are competitive, the eff efficiency will be satisfied. And so therefore, uh, in the, you know, in the RBC model, the economy is always efficient and there is, so therefore there is no role for government intervention. So that means in an RBC model, you know, you shouldn't have, the Fed shouldn't exist. So it's a model in which, you know, the Fed makes no sense. Uh, and furthermore, you should never have any fiscal policies, or, you know, government spending makes no sense uh, in, in, the ba in the basic model and stimulus spending makes no sense. Okay, because um, this, in this model, so, you know, well, but in a sense, you know, that's not um, that's not a really deep insight from the model. It's just because they assume Valrhesian uh, competitive market, and we know that, I mean, you know, going back to all the general equilibrium theory and Arrow Dobro, uh, we know that such uh, Valrhesian models are always efficient. Well, you know, so. Uh, then if you have a macro model that's built around competitive market and Valrazi, you know, if, if you have a Valrazian macro model, then you know that you'll always be efficient and therefore there's no role for the government. Uh, you know, in, that's always like this view that markets are going to guarantee efficiency. Well, sure, you know, there's the assumption that's true and therefore, because you assume that, you, a direct consequence is that your model is going to tell you that there is no role for government. Now, of course, that's not... You know, in a sense, it's not uh, what well, I mean. You know, it's not super <laughs> helpful to then um, design policy. I mean, it tells you that you should shut down the government, basically. But other than that, it's not going to tell you um, what you should do. You know, how monetary policy should behave and how you should tailor fiscal policy to the state of the of the economy. Um, so you know, but in these models, you study efficiency. That's what you learn. That's what you take away, uh, given the assumption you make. But um, we'll see that in uh, matching models, things are going to be di very different. So the, in any of the uh, matching models that we've laid out, things are, are very different because matching models, uh, they are generally inefficient, as we will see. So you know, these are models in which you have markets, uh, but this, but the, the thing is that these are, uh, you know, people think that, oh, if you have a market, a market economy, then you'll always have efficiency. But that's not true. It depends on the market structure that you assume. And so if you assume Valrhesian structure, sure, you'll have efficiency. Um, but as we discussed, you know, Valrhesian structures are very few Valrhesian markets in, in, in actuality in the world. You know, the stock market may be one of them. 
some commodity markets, uh, but really that's all. Um, other, most other markets are better described as a matching market. And in these matching markets, you have this um, bilateral relationships and prices are determined uh, in situations of bilateral monopoly. And these models are going to be generally inefficient. And so that means that there will be actually a very interesting role for government policy in this model. Uh, role for uh, government and uh, policy. So that's why uh, it'll be interesting to study exactly, well, you know, we'll have to establish that claim that the models are generally inefficient. We'll then see what is the efficient allocation there, and then we'll see how what the government can do to try to reach that efficient allocation.